No. Oh, mine's nice. My limca. Power soda is obviously Indian for ditch water. Do you want some? I think in order to foster Anglo-British relations, we should adopt their style of driving on the motorway in Britain. I think we should adopt their attitude to most things, actually. Do you think it's a sort of motoring style we could roll out or just immediately do? I think... Why would you not immediately...? I mean, the motorway was built as a sort of free-for-all, wasn't it? Which that is. There can't be a transitional phase, because that would be extremely hazardous. You've got to well, agree that on a certain night, we go Indian. At then, midnight, yeah. we adopt the Indian style, which is better than ours, and there are no rules. There are no police patrols, no highway wombles, nobody's allowed to close it for any reason. <coughs> it might take some bedding in as an idea. It I might disagree take the with you. the first six months, it might be a bit of... Are you well, dead? No, absolutely not. You had no bedding in. Are you no. dead? No, I'm not I'm dead. I'm not and dead. And also, I think I've actually maintained overall a reasonable speed. I bet your average speed is as good as it is on the M1. No, it isn't. Well, on the M1, yes, because yeah. the M1's rubbish. But the M1's rubbish because they've coned it off. They wouldn't cone it off. They have cone road They use off. rocks instead of cones, I've noticed. I and saw you... another lorry broken down, rocks round it. Rocks round it, so that bursts your tyre. What's the expected effect of that? It's to warn you that there's a lorry ahead. I mean, they only put the rock a yard away, I've noticed that. Yeah, so basically what you do is have a crash with a rock very close to a broken yeah. down lorry. The idea that you see the rock, but not the massive lorry. They also put a branch sometimes on yes. the back of it. <laughs> but that's just courtesy. It's nice. We're not talking about courtesy. <coughs> I'm talking about a road network where, admittedly, quite a few hundred thousand people are killed. That is a drawback but it's so much more fun to drive on them. I'm not sure that hundreds of thousands of people would be killed. I think if you combined Indian driving techniques but with a modern infrastructure, you'd be perfectly OK. I've driven many, many miles on British motorways. You never see a car coming the other way. No. And what I really liked was the last chap I saw just a couple of miles back was flashing his lights and pipping his horn at me. Indignant. How dare I be coming the other way when I was on the right side of the road? On the lights flashing issue, that's part of a whole thing I was worried about because I'd been told, you know, if you flash your lights in oncoming traffic, that doesn't mean you can overtake. It means I'm going to overtake. Yes. Stay in. Same with the indicators. A right-hand indicator doesn't mean I'm overtaking, it means you can. Yeah. And I thought there'd be like a real language <coughs> difficulty. There isn't a language, though, is it? They don't, it doesn't, there's there's nothing, nothing means it's anything. A, you can it's do all instinctive after yes, 10 yeah. minutes. I was going to suggest that we stood here and tried to teach them how to drive properly, but actually it's the other way around. We need to go home with this attitude. On the night when we decide we will make the change to Indian driving, as you say, it's probably midnight, there needs to be blanket radio announcements because anyone who's on the motorway and has forgot, oh, you would get a surprise. Be... Well, but then maybe they... that's just tough. They have it's to be it's a bit like digital analog. You've yeah. been told, you were warned, yeah. now you're dead. No, thank you. His teeth? Is that his teeth white? Well. This is the generator yep. for the power, for the lights and things. Lights, anything we need. I sourced it locally, but I chose this one because it's British, look. It's a Leyland engine, and it's a British generator unit as well. And what? to start it, you ready? You take this wire yeah. and you put it on there. What's that? It's spitting bits at me. A bit of dust. It's quite noisy. It is, isn't it? I didn't realise it was going to be that noisy. Pre-ignition. I did pre that. I know how to solve this problem. You know the Belgians mm. sell more to India than we do. I know. And they've obviously got it into their heads in India that Belgians make good things. How about perfect? Uh huh. Oh, a seed. Yes. Like so the it. guests, when they're really annoyed by it, yep. they'll come over and they'll see that. 
Good thinking. They'll never find the Leyland badge. It's tiny. <clears throat> Hammond? Ah. What's Hammond? this? It's dazzling, is it? It's just a bit of cloth and a, it's just a frame. I'm very, very pleased. I, d I know, I didn't... Ah, because if I put walls on every side, it would get hot. I want to show the colours of the flag and, and then... And your flag? Well, uh, yeah, but the colours of the red, white and blue are there. It's yeah, but you've the colours of the you Union You put the Jack, blue, white, white red, red is the French flag. That is a French flag. It looks French. I wondered why it looked familiar. What is it with you and flags? It's a French textbook, isn't it? Yeah. It just looks French. Nobody will notice. They will. Well, I noticed. Yeah, I just looked up Yeah, the well, you were all pedantic. You notice that sort of stuff. Oh, Most people go, <laughs> pedantic. oh, red, white and blue, that's nice. France, yes. If you start from this side... So, I see, so if you come here... Blue. Yes. Ah, yes. Good now thinking. we're looking... Now, this is good. Now it looks like the red arrows have so just we'll have to. Over. Let's invite everybody to stand outside you, Marky, in the sun. No, it's... I've, uh, what if... No. I'm sorry, I'm off. I've got my trouser press to worry about. Hammond. What? What happened to your hair? Hmm? Your hair? What's happened to your hair? No, uh, I'm demonstrating hair products. It's one of the products that we make a lot of, and you see, I'm now I'm a moving exhibition. Are they supposed to do that to it, though? Well, I did that to it, so obviously, yes, I mean... Chaps. What? He's a lawnmower. His hair isn't our biggest problem. I have got here a list of people who have accepted and who are coming. And, and honest, for instance, we've got the head fellow from the Royal Society of Arts right up Top Gear Street. We've got an Indian film producer, finance manager, managing director, managing director, managing partner, managing director. Really? Yes. So you've got the managing director of Microsoft, the managing director of Obroy. The managing director of Virgin Atlantic. This is a scary, scary list of people. Yeah, it is. And that's why it's very important, Jeremy, that you listen for a moment, because I got in contact with uh, the Foreign Office and I've had them send me this. And it's a list of business and social etiquette. OK, this is from the Foreign Office. This is what they say. Never point your feet at someone. Feet your feet at your, your feet at someone. Feet are considered unclean. And if your shoes or feet touch another person, you must apologise. Well, they are quite unclean. They're, They're covered in mud. Yes, well, don't point those grotty items at anyone. Right. The head is considered the seat of the soul. It's rude to touch someone's head. Well, I thought you were doing hair care products. Yeah, how are, you gonna, how are you going to apply your gel? I'll ask if I can touch the seat of their soul, and then I'll, I'll okay, get on with it. Whistling is impolite. You is always it? whistle. Do not comment on a person's appearance or clothes in a negative way. That's a big deal here. What, not even Don't, your hair? No. It's rude. Don't do this. Here's what you mustn't do precisely and exactly. <whistles> uh, you. Why are you late, fella? You look a mess. <laughs> All of that is wrong. <laughs> Catastrophic. <laughs> I mean, internationally, I mean, we need to bother. <laughs> Everything's OK. Why are we tenting? Sorry. Couldn't go any further. Couldn't go any further. It's, it's nice to... It... Kill me. All right. I wish I was dead. We're surrounded by mandas. I bet in the morning... Uh, really? It'll be a beautiful view. It will be beautiful. I bet you when it... I've got to get through the night while tenting. And you can never get the temperature up. If you sit here, it's absolutely roasting, but my back's got salmonella. I'm like a British barbecue sausage. Front burst. Bat's got salmonella. Now go here. Why do you like this? We're getting in touch with our basic to make primal excuses cells. for it. We're not in the hotel we would have booked. And what's this? What's that? It's the Stars and Stripes. That, my friend, is a Steve McQueen special edition jacket. Is oh. it? But we're on yeah. a British yeah. uh, trade mission. British? And it's got a Union Jack lining. And it's got a British flag there. Why didn't you think to do that? Well, because I didn't. Because you're fundamentally think. American. You want to be an American so you can have a pickup truck and sit around a campfire going, Yeah! You do. The noise. I, I like both of those. I like pickup trucks, <coughs> I like fires. That doesn't make me American. You like cheese with things. Oh, I like cheese. You do like cheese with things. But not with everything. Yes, I don't like you do. cheese with, with lettuce. 
Yes, you do. You have cheese on your salad. Menina Listen, because of James's ridiculous, enormous 2.2 ton Rolls Royce, you ripped my puppy's face off. Well, I think no. you'll find my Jaguar pulled his massive Rolls Royce up that hill, no problem at all. You were the one who put a winch on and said, yes, we'll need a winch. Why are you impersonating me? <laughs> I was impersonating you, impersonating him. No, me impersonating him is, let's skin possum, throw it on the fire, get Wilbur and Myrtle over. They can look at the V8 in my pickup truck and my Steve McQueen jacket. That's him. Look at him. Bet you wish that was Budweiser. You do, don't you? I'm you like not, this. I'm still in mourning for my car's face that you pulled off. I you pull it off. You, pulled, you it off. pulled it off. Just peeled off. You can see his skull. It's like Terminator when all the skin's melted off. <coughs> you can just see the structure. Do you like steak? Yes, I do. Do you like cheese? Yes, I do. Do you there like you pickup go. trucks? Yes, I do. Do you like tenting? Yes, I do. Do you like Harley Davidsons? Yes. Have you got some cowboy boots and have you got a big hat with a piece of string underneath it that says Made in USA inside it? You are American. I'm not American. You are American. You are. You've been in America. Why I'm did not... you buy that? Because it's not, it looks good. It's a Steve McQueen special one. I was pleased with it. And what am I going to sleep in? A tent. Not with him. No, no. I went to the North end. Pole sleeping with a six-foot maggot. No, sorry, I was the maggot. You were the you... sweary maggot. You were a six-foot sinus. <laughs> You no, breathe out! Well. Breathe out! All the airs are... He starts, honestly, it's like... This... <laughs> you don't know air that is all in your mucus! I'll be Jeremy for you, briefly, in your sleeping bag. Well, a f***ing tent, I mean, I pass the f***ing thing. Tent, f***ing, I mean, a tent, I mean, a f***ing tent, 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 <laughs> for eight hours. Well, we've made a new scientific discovery. Yes. Uh, for many hundreds of years, I think it's been accepted that the lowest temperature achievable anywhere on Earth is minus 273. Absolute but actually, it's not zero. Absolute zero, yes. But it's not true, no. as it turns out. No, Jeremy. It's, mi it's minus 299 in my tent last yeah. night. I want to present you... I know this looks... I know this looks very picturesque this morning, I want to present you some of the discomfort I had to endure last night. This was my pillow. What they'd done is they got the case and simply walked around the campsite, filling it with either bits of manure or sharp stones, and then they'd sort of lightly smothered it with a sprinkling of icy, melted gla glacial water. Yeah. And that was my pillow. This was my sleeping bag, my comedy Indian sleeping bag. So you do the zip up, but it remains open. Look. It didn't work, nothing. So I had this was open, my leg was sticking out into absolute zero, and then my head was resting on this, which is just filled with rocks. I'd like to present to you the blanket we were given. Here it is, oh, it's a bit garish, but you think, well, that looks like a nice fluffy blanket, but I'd like to point out that... It's transparent. Yeah, it's it's see-through. <laughs> I mean, look at it. And that was all we got, plus a, a, a supposed mattress that was, as far as I could tell, just one of these rocks that they put the tent on. <laughs> it's absolutely unbearable. I lay there thinking Socrates was offered the chance of having his heart pulled out through his anus. Mm. And I honestly thought in the middle of the night I would rather have that than what I am enduring now. I nearly went to spoon with James because I was so cold. It was, it was, and it was impossible to be warm. I had this on that you see now, this puffer jacket, this hat. I also had these trousers on. I had some long johns underneath them. I put some long johns on top of them. <coughs> I put some extra socks on over the socks I had on. I then put some socks on my hands. I then put the hood of this so up. Good. I then put the hood of that up, and so I was good. still freezing to death. It was just unspeakable. <laughs> it was... And I, th I contemplated ending it Wait, I thought I'd go to set fire to my tent so that I'll have a brief moment of warmth before death's cold embrace takes me. Yes. And then I was lying there, and I could only hear the sound of my own teeth smashing themselves to pieces as they chatted into one another. I had a moment of genuine, <laughs> genuine panic. I was lying there, and I thought, everybody else is asleep, but I'm not, and I am genuinely freezing to death, and it's making my head hurt. And what shall I do? Shall I make a break for the rolls? 
what if I can't find it in the dark? And what if I can't find the rolls or the keys aren't in it and I then can't find my way back you to my tent? To, and then you trip over a guy rope. Yep. Because that's the other thing about tenting. The campsite is littered with excrement and rope, so you trip over a rope with a face first in excrement. Yep. And then, well, it warm you up. And also, the other thing, I, don't, I can't remember how high we are now, about 13,000 feet? Yes. It's, the air at night is very cold, but it's also very thin. Uh, so you'd be curled up and, and you'd, get, you'd get into a sort of fetal position, still, you know, not, not trembling with the cold, but vibrating like a badly tuned <laughs> diesel dumper truck. No, he's right, he's right. You and then, but then you think, I'm going to turn over the other way and see if I can wrap myself up more. And the effort of doing that left me so breathless, I thought, I am actually going to suffocate. I have to get down the mountain where it will be warmer yeah, and I can breathe. But you can't. And why are the sleeping bags? Why are they shiny on the outside? So you put the blanket on it and it just falls straight. Well, blanket, the lace curtain on it, it falls straight off. Why? And this is a deadly serious question because I want somebody to answer it. <sighs> Do we have this vogue for a sleeping bag that is effectively mummification? Why? I mean, when I was a boy, a sleeping bag was rectangular and you could move around inside it and take a book inside it and a torch and things like that. But this is, you just wake up in the night thinking, somebody's come into my tent and performed some strange bondage act on me. Oh, I can't yeah. move my arms. I'm I wanted to, I wanted Minus to get 299. And kill Hammond. I mean, kill him. Kill him. I was uh, just quick and stab him in the heart because he made me go through hell. I think we need to get some scientists up here to investigate this phenomenon of the lower temperature than we thought was possible. It was, it was lower. My tent was... Because as I went to bed last night, I just heard James rather plaintively from inside his tent. He just said... Jeremy, and he's never called me Jeremy before. Went, Jeremy, I'm very cold. I just couldn't believe that anybody else could put up with it. I couldn't believe this wasn't just a campsite of wailing <laughs> and, and sort of self-immolation to just get it over with. It was... Look at it. It's just disgusting and medieval. Where's my Rolls Royce? We're in Austria, filming our Top Gear. No, we're in India. We? Yeah. This is India. It's India. Food. Those are the Himalayas. That explains the food. Yeah. Okay, yeah. we're in India, filming our Top Gear Christmas special for this year, which will be broadcast some point over the Christmas period. Yes, and we'd just like to say a very big thank you at uh, this juncture to all our internet, Facebook and Twitter followers for supporting us so well over the year. Thank you. In what way have they supported us? I have literally no idea. That's what I was told to say. I'm aware of it. Have they sent us any money? I don't think so. Personally, I'd like to say thank you for everyone who pays their licence fee, because that's thank what's you. actually got us here, that yes. and our ingenuity and brilliance. But is, it, is this... This isn't going on the proper television, no. is it? This is going on the no, internet. We're on a, a computer screen. Right? Yeah. Computer, yeah. yeah that, that big... We're not grateful to you at all. I mean, you, we don't ask you to come, and it doesn't cost you anything. It just seems... immediately aware of the support. I don't feel I don't know. support. If I fall back now... <laughs> no, you're not there. No. Where were you? Let me try falling forwards and see what happens. Where no, were you? Nobody Could have fallen on his there. face, had to save himself. Where was the support? It's, you know, now you mention it, I had to do some repairs on my car, and as I was doing them in a workshop, I didn't suddenly turn and say, uh, can anybody tell me where Twitter is? No. Because it, it wasn't there for yeah. me. Well, you sure face well, you just no. stopped me doing that. You, you, you had no support for you. Did Facebook help you mend your brakes? No. Nope. Did Facebook help you mend your fuel pump? No. Nope. You haven't supported us, as it turns out. But well, thank you for tuning in anyway. Yes. Thank you for being fans no, of the show. They haven't tuned in. This is on the computer. It's not tuning in. They're just thank turning it on. Thank you for making the relevant clicks. Yes. Uh, and not watching pornography just for a change. And watching. Um, well, we hope you enjoy the show that we're going to make for you. Yes. It's probably quite Hand good. Handmade, actually. Yeah. And it's India, not Austria. It is India. That's Despite it this is. hat, which is the wrong hat well, for no, India. No. This is the is right that hat. Why have you been going up to everyone every morning going, God, Morgan? Well, I, I, I did wonder. People look dumbfounded by it. Yeah. Still, how I know. Very thin bread they have in Austria. In a world where terror has no name. Holy! And there are no rules. Oh, dear God. Oh, oh! There's the train! Oh, my God! Please let me have my Rolls Royce back. <laughs> Come on, Himalayas. Come on. Catch it! Ah!